Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Expose. On this episode, we're going to go into probably the most requested episode of the zine series and probably the entire channel. We're going to go into an InDesign tutorial on how to lay out and design your zine, export it, and get it ready to go off for print. Uh, I'm going to say right off the get-go, this is kind of a basic tutorial. I'm not going to go crazy in depth, but I do have some shortcuts that I think are really going to help and will uh, will actually translate to really any of the book projects that you're working on. So I'm going to give you a set of tools, a very basic set of tools that you could start working with right off the get-go if you've never stepped into InDesign before, which is where I was at um, just before this last zine. I'm going to give you some tools that, that I've worked out and figured out uh, that make laying stuff out extremely, extremely simple. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through the first uh, few spreads from this zine. So this is the Sketches of Light zine. Uh, this is my most recent zine that I've put out. I'm going to do another video follow-up to where I'm going to walk through from start to finish the entire process of this zine so that way you guys can know uh, some of the hang-ups that I hit during the whole process, but then uh, really kind of see what it looks like to go from start to finish, include some of the, the pricing, uh, what I paid for different things, for the zines themselves, for the shipping materials, what shipping ended up being. But I'm going to do an entire breakdown of that coming up in a future video. Also, if you haven't seen some of the other zine videos, I have an entire series, I'm going to link to it up top here, uh, but an entire series talked about building zines. I talk about what a zine is. I talk about some of my ideas and concepts for laying out a zine. Uh, and then I'm going to be going over that a little bit more in depth too when we break down this guy. But in this, we're going to actually build another replica of this zine. So uh, to give you guys an idea, this was actually based off of like the moleskin or the uh, travel notebooks, the little pocket notebooks. So that's why it's got the rounded corners. It has the craft paper front cover. Uh, then it also has 48 spreads on the inside to match the 48 pages that typically come with those little pocket notebooks. So if you, any of you guys are anything like myself, I avoided going into InDesign for as long as I possibly could. And actually, my first zine, the My Kind of Town zine, and then all the other book projects that I had done before that were all done in Photoshop. And I will say that it can be done in Photoshop, and you could actually take some of the ideas uh, that we talk about today and then kind of incorporate them over to Photoshop, but Photoshop adds probably a hundred different steps on top of uh, the making a zine process that you really have to go through in order to get everything laid out properly. I will say that since jumping into InDesign, it makes so much sense. InDesign will make your life so, so easy. So whether you have an old copy or whether you have the Creative Cloud and you can download a copy of InDesign, I highly, highly suggest jumping into InDesign. This isn't an InDesign paid tutorial or anything like that. It's just from going from working in Photoshop, and I'm very, very fluent in Photoshop, over to a program that I'm not too fluent in but was able to do the workflow in less than half the time. Uh, it just made so much sense after I was in and uh, arms deep within InDesign. So uh, I'm going to kind of take away some of the fears of InDesign and learning the whole new process. And uh, if you've ever been in there, some of the controls and stuff, we're not going to cover many controls at all. I'm just going to give you guys what, like the just bare essentials for what you need to get your zine into production. So we're going to get jumping over into InDesign as we go through. If there's any questions that you guys have or anything like that along the way, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below as we go. Um, maybe start drafting up a comment and then I might answer it part way through the video. But at the end, I definitely want to hear any questions that you have or if there's anything in my process that's severely flawed, I would love to hear that as well because I want to extreme or uh, expediate my process along the way as well. So thank you guys. We're going to jump in here over on InDesign. So First things first, you open up InDesign. This is your uh, opening page. We're going to go up here. Uh, actually, I'm still in QuickTime over here. We're going to open up New Document. Uh, so one of the things that you have to consider is when you set up your number of pages up here, so right up here in the number of pages, they have to be divisible by four. So if you look at, you know, you take a piece of paper. If you consider if you're folding a piece of paper into uh, the half, you have four different pages here. So you have one here, one on the back side, and then two on the inside. So when it considers pages, it's actually considering a face of a, of a spread, right? A page here. So each page of paper 
has four pages to it. So uh, you can't really put three pages in or, you know, so you have to divide it down by four. So with this zine here, like I said, inside here is 48 different pages, but then you also have the cover, uh, which is four pages in and of itself. So we're gonna be adding 52 pages up top here. Starting page number one, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna have it start off with facing pages. Uh, I'm gonna kind of talk about this a little bit as we go. Uh, in here, so automatically it defaults to letter. Um, we're actually gonna change, mine was 3.5 by 5.5. And what you wanna do is, this is actually the dimensions of one page, not the entire spread, but one page in and of itself. So uh, this right here is 3.5 by 5.5. Um, if you're going to do a landscape zine, you can choose that right here. And this is going to be a portrait orientation. Um, don't worry about the columns and number or gutters. Um, that's kind of a little bit more advanced. You could really dive into that stuff and start building um, different uh, structures that you could build within, but we're going to do that in a little bit of a different way. So as far as our margins, I'm just going to erase this out. And if you just uh, click in one, hit zero, and then click into another, it's going to copy it all over. And then right here, we definitely want to add this bleed and slug. So I'm going to do 0.125 of an inch, and uh, this will carry on over as well. So once this is all set up uh, to whatever size and however many pages, and you can change how many pages you have into it. So it's not like you're set into these figures as you go. You can make changes along the way. But um, we're going to click OK, and then we're going to bring... Mine's over on my other screen here, but uh, right here... So what you're going to see is this will be your cover and then the inside spread. So uh, I'm going to break it down like this. So this is the cover here um, right to the next one. This is your inside. So you're going to have the in page of your cover, inside front page of your cover, and then the first page of the actual spread on the inside. And then from there on out, it goes page after page, spread after spread. Um, and then these are all set up as spreads. And then at the very bottom, you scroll down here, double click on your 52. This is our back page up here. So one of the things that we're gonna do right off the get go. So uh, if you look at my zine, and I, I like to do this just because it makes layout so easy and you can freeform layout all you want. I mean, if you wanna just drag and drop and let things fall where they may, it's your zine, it's up to you. Um, but as far as me, if you look, I have kind of a, a grid structure that goes across. So you'll see that there's a consistency in different size images. I have some that are full page, some that are, are a little bit smaller, and then some that are kind of in between the smaller and the full page. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna go and set up those rules to be able to design within that. So if you look up over here on your pages, there's a none and then a master. So if I click on this A master, um, I actually have my, I copied and pasted my, my rules because I didn't wanna have to lay these out for you guys in here, but what you can see, and actually if I click on our first page here, um, it'll show you. So what I did is I set up these rules, and this would be the same as going up here and dragging uh, a rule down. If you've ever worked in, in Photoshop, uh, I click on this and delete that. If you've ever worked in Photoshop, you can do the same thing over there. You do rules. If you don't have your ruler up, you can hit Command R. It'll pull the ruler out. Um, but if you put it in that master, what it's going to do is it's going to populate, auto-populate all the way throughout so that way you aren't having to set it up or copy and paste it um, to each of the different spreads. So what this is going to allow me to do is I've essentially built a grid here. And how I came up with this grid was I just kind of worked over in Photoshop and kind of moved some things around and figured out what best balance uh, was that I was looking for. But um, essentially what I have here is, and I could actually take a rectangle we can draw this out, is right here. And the nice thing is, is things will constrain to these rules. So when you drag it out, it'll constrain and you know have the same proportions all the way through. Um, but what I would have is an image here, uh, or you know that size image, this size image, and then we could go all the way across the entire page and have three different size images that we could work off of and kind of have a dynamic spread uh, that way. So I'm gonna take all these and uh, delete all these. So one of the things that I would suggest before you go into actually laying things out is I have a, a folder over here. So like I said, we're just going to go through the first six 
spreads of the zine. If we were to do the entire thing, this would go on for quite a while. The, the process is actually pretty quick, but to be able to talk through it and do it on video would take quite a while. Um, so what I, I suggest you do is you go through and um, if you've already done the sequencing, so I'm going to link up top here to a video that I talked about actually building the sequence and, and actually how I go about doing the sequencing in paper form. Uh, I print all the images off, sequence them all up that way, and then kind of start jotting down my notes um, to where I know by the time I hit InDesign, roughly where my spreads are going to show up. Um, and, you know, I'm cheating here to where I've already designed this zine and I already know what it's going to look like, but a lot of it is kind of playing around in, you know, within the constraints that I've built myself and seeing how these different spreads end up looking um, together and how they flow and I might make changes as I go. But before I hit this point, I've already kind of made a bunch of different notes and I kind of have a general idea of where I'm going. So in here, images for layout, this is just a little file folder. So I have image one through 10 and then I have a couple others here that we're gonna, um, I'm gonna show you some other tips and tricks that won't be included in, in these guys up here. So I'm gonna have this over on my other screen here. We're gonna continue moving here. So if this is, I'm gonna open my pages back up here. If this is our, our front page, one of the things that we want to do is I'm going to give mine a title. So I'm going to center this. Light. I'm going to bring this guy down, go back. Then what I used up here was uh, Helvetica New. So actually I want these to be all cap locked and we're going to add some spacing in here. I think it's probably around 100. Uh, right there, we're gonna bring this size up. And again, this is to your liking. And then I could actually take this entire box. So we could actually click our select tool, which is our V tool. So if you just hit V, you can get over to this. Click outside, I'm gonna click on this box and then when we move this box around we could actually move it till the center uh, constraint line comes up and we can actually position it right in center. I'm going to do another box down here. This is going to have my name in it. Once again we're going to use Helvetica New. I'm going to do a medium for this and we'll do that whole thing there. Actually, I need to go back in. We can't forget to center our text. Move that to the center there. And boom. We have our first page done. So with your front cover, you might have an image or you might have text like this. I put text down here. Uh, my first zine had an image. It also had text on top of it. Um, but with this zine, I did the, the text on front and then I uh, duplicated it to the inside cover. So we could actually uh, Select all this, hit Command C, jump into the, the next one here. We can hit Command V, which brings it over here. And then once again, we just drag and drop right into uh, our center of our spread here. I could drop that in right there and it's set. Uh, our second page is all set and gone. We jump into our, our next spread here and this is where the fun starts to happen. This is where our images um, start to appear in the spread. So this is why we set up the grids that we did. Uh, yes, it helps to um, align our, our text and everything like that, and we'll do a text box within this grid later on. Um, but if you go over here, your rectangle frame tool, so this is actually the, the F tool. If we click F, I could actually drag. We did a rectangle earlier, but this is a frame tool. So we drag a frame in here. So now you have this big X over here. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to actually drag and drop uh, an image into our frame. So if we go back over, uh, we grab our images for the layout. And if I drag our first image onto this, uh, it jumps right into our frame here. So now you're looking at this and you're going, what the heck is that? That looks super abstract. That can't be what it's supposed to be. Um, the thing is, our image is the same size as it was when it was exported from Lightroom. Uh, but now it's, there's only a bit of what it is showing. Um, so a shortcut tool, or actually if we right click here, uh, you go to fitting. If you go fill content proportion proportionally or fill frame proportionally, uh, I do this fill frame. So now what that does is it constrains 
our, our image, or it actually shrinks our image down to fit within uh, our frame. The thing is, there's still image on the outside of the frame. It's all constrained to the actual size of the frame. So actually, if we take our selection tool here, we can actually start to move our frame and we can start to see that there's image underneath our frame that, that is constrained. So we could start to move this around. And actually, I know with this one, I wanted this to be more along the lines of here. Oops, bring it back. So this is actually where I wanted our, our image to be. So then we can again hit Command, Option, Shift, C, and we can constrain it once again uh, to that proportion. So that's gonna come in super handy as we go throughout and uh, allow us to lay out things extremely, extremely quick. Now you might notice that this looks really, really pixelated. It looks really grainy and it doesn't look that great. If I go over here to display performance, you can click high quality display and all of a sudden the image will render and you'll actually be able to see it much clearer. But in order to work and in order to work at a fast pace, we're just gonna keep this at fast display. Whoops. Actually, we're going to keep this at typical display, uh, and it's going to leave it kind of grainy. Uh, but at the same time, we already know that our image is going to export properly. It's already in there at full resolution. Uh, it's just giving us a display as a uh, quick preview. So that was our first image. Our second image, we're going to go back over here, or we can hit the F tool once again, our frame tool. We're going to jot this into here. So with this frame selected, we're going to go back over to our images here. We're going to grab image two and drop it right back in here. If your page goes blank, it's fine. It's already selected on this. Sometimes it just freaks out. It might be because I have so many different things running on my computer. Um, and then we're gonna, once again, Command Control Option C, constrain that right in here. And then we can also, we can grab our image here. If you grab right here, you could start moving your image around within the frame. So I can move it down here. Once again, the, con the frame is all that's going to show. So if the image goes down below the center of the frame, uh, you know, you start to lose out on some of your image, but you could start to drag and, and drop this around and start making uh, little tweaks here. So and actually I'm going to move this over a little bit. So that way this lightning bolt of light comes in right here. I'm going to start looking and and actually if you want to see what your spread looks like without the rules on there, you can hit command colon. Uh, and it will take your rules off and you can start to see what the spread is actually looking like. So we're going to put those back on. Uh, and as you guys can see, this is pretty simple. We're going to come over to our, our next layout here. And in here, uh, this is actually where I'm going to uh, take our frame tool. I'm going to go all the way up top here. And we're going to make a full page spread. We'll go back to our move tool constrain this in. Uh, so one thing that I, I want to note here is these these red lines out here, these are our bleed lines. So um, what happens at the, the printer is they're going to print over the actual edge of uh, your zine. So if there's any images like what we're about to do that hang over the edge that are full bleed, it continues on past. That way when they cut, they have a little bit of variance uh, just in case they cut a little bit inside or a little bit outside. You're not going to get like a little white edge that comes along the outside. So um, building a frame that's outside of what our actual page is going to be is very important for these full um, spread images. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that as we go. Um, so once again, we're going to jump over to our images here. Uh, I'm going to go back. Oops, this is the wrong images. Jump over to our images here. And then I'm going to go in here, drag this into our shot here. Command Control C, or Command Control Option C. And now we have a full page spread. So what happens is, like I said, this is gonna overhang and uh, when it exports, when we see the exported file, um, this will actually come up with crop lines on the outside. So it's gonna export a little bit larger file than what we actually need to print. So that way when the printer prints it, like I said, they could print it a little bit larger. They could cut down to those bleed lines and, uh, and get nice crisp uh, prints for you guys. So. Um, we're going to revisit this uh, with this guy and then some of these other ones that we're going to do in a little bit once we go into our uh, exporting settings. We have to tweak these just a little bit more to make sure that they export properly and that the printers have a proper file that they can work with. 
Um, so this on the other side, I know that I have one other image over here. Set this guy up. Bring this over here. You guys know the drill. We're going to constrain this down. And then I'm going to move this guy over. Whoops. Don't forget when you when you want to move something, you want to hit this center uh, section here. And we're going to move that over just a little bit, just so I get that American flag in there. And then we're on to the next spread. And as you guys can see, this is taking just a couple minutes at a time in order to do each of these different spreads. And uh, it's going to go really quick. Once you get the hang of it, once you have everything kind of laid out to where you want to go with it, um, you're going to be able to move forward quite quickly. So this next one here, I know that we have two different um, medium-sized spreads. So I'm going to go back to our images here. I have two different parking garage, parking structure uh, pieces. Do this one. We still have our frame tool selected, so I can just do another one right off the get-go. Go back over here. And we have these all set. As you can see with, with my pairings, so let me talk about this real quick because I know that I'm going to get some questions and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in depth when we go into the follow-up video and we kind of break down this zine. Um, but as you can see with this zine in particular, uh, not all of them end up being like this, but with this one I was looking for similarities in content. So uh, these kind of tropes that I was working through. So all these images, by the way, were shot on my iPhone, shot and edited on my iPhone. So uh, shot them with the Filmborn app. I absolutely love that app. Edited them with uh, Snapseed. I absolutely love that app. Uh, and then sent them over to my computer. The entire zine is based around the idea that uh, my iPhone has really become my pocket memo book. It's really become my pocket sketchbook, my pocket notebook. And then looking and seeing how over time I was gravitating towards similar uh, content and similar contrasts and similar just dip bits and pieces. So you see here with the, the different shafts of light that are quite similar in nature. If we go down to this one, um, you have two very, very similar. Both have trees in them. Both have very moody, almost evening kind of uh, feels to them. Very dramatic lighting. Um, then you go over here, both in parking structures, both with these arrows. In fact, um, this is the same arrow shot from two different angles. And you start to see how uh, my phone has really become a pocket sketchbook. It's really become a place to where I've really pressed into different compositions, pressed into different uh, explorations, and have a consistency throughout the board. So that's what the whole thing is all about. And that's why I ended up pairing these up this way. Um, I could also talk about here why I end up doing some smaller, some larger. I think that there's a, a great deal of dynamic nature that comes when you start to pair up uh, different subject matter and, and different size of subject matter. And then uh, when you have things that are consistent, you can really start to break down the conversation that you're having with the audience, going back to our conversation video that we did. Um, you could start to break down the conversation that we have with our audience and start to direct the conversation and start to give weight. When I, with this spread here, when I give this image a little bit larger size than this image, I know that your eye, and I, I heard this from Ralph Gibson before, and it made so much sense. I know that your eye is going to go over to the right page before it goes back to the left page. So this is exactly what he says. Making the image smaller on the right page uh, gives less dominance to the right page, which allows your eye to naturally go back to the left page and then force itself to the right page. Um, so, and I, I was working on this stuff back when I was doing layouts for uh, graphic design and uh, the charity that I was working with for years and years and years as their creative director. I would do prospectus pieces and marketing pieces and uh, have different weight to images and you have this hierarchy you always have a visual hierarchy of of how you want the eye to be directed through and we do it with our photography when you photograph something you're giving visual hierarchy within the scene that you're photographing but then it has to extend over to the layouts that we're doing over here as well so oftentimes you'll see where uh, and also a big thing that can happen is it continues energy level if you move through, and this isn't the entire case, like this isn't a blanket statement, but oftentimes if you move through uh, and everything is the same size, every page, it starts to become a little stagnant. You could start to anticipate what's going to happen on the next page. But when you give this variance to where we go from the first page here, 
has uh, text on it to this next page to where left page is larger, right page is smaller, back into the right page where the left page is even larger, right page is smaller, and then next page we have two of the same size. You get this variance and it's starting to hold interest and you don't always know what's gonna happen on the next spread. Other ways that you could do that is Whereas I have these uh, white backgrounds here, you can make black backgrounds and have your, your images recede into black versus white. And I did that a lot in my first zine to where one spread would be very, very bright and airy. The next scene would be very, very dark and moody. And then I would start to, in the last zine, I, I would do different compositional positions. And granted, here we're very consistent in the center of the page all the way through. In the uh, My Kind of Town zine about Chicago, which I'll link to a video up top here to where I kind of walk through and walk through the zine from start to finish, but you'll start to see where some of the, the images started down low and then the next page would start up high and it start to lead your eyes in this visual journey. And it's just thinking about these little nuances as you go through. So once again, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more as we go forward and uh, do the follow-up videos about the zine and kind of break down why it is that I sequenced, why it is that I designed it the way that I did. Um, but this will give you kind of an idea as we go forward here of, of what we're looking at and what we're thinking through as we go through. Uh, and then also to, uh, to go with this one again, we're going to do another small image here. But I'm going to do it on this side first. And we're going to leave this left page blank. Uh, and again, once again, it gives that visual interest where you flip the page and all of a sudden the rhythm that we've established has now been severed and all of a sudden a new rhythm and a new pattern is, is started within our sequence. All of a sudden you introduce this new element to where, okay, now there's a space of white on the left, allowing these little breaks in rhythm. Um, it's, you know, if you think about jazz, if you think about musical compositions and breaks in rhythms can really take a composition to a different level because all of a sudden you have these hiccups and it, it causes the viewer, it causes the listener to kind of recompose and, and regather and they start to re-engage to where they may have started to drift off throughout the song, throughout the composition, throughout the, uh, you know, the, the spreads of the zine and it's allowing people to continue to grab their attention and grab the, the audience in. And if you know anything about marketing, and they talk about in marketing that uh, our average attention span has uh, drastically decreased over the years to where, uh, you know, so many of us, I already know that so many of you guys have checked out of this video and, and might bounce back in later on. So if, you're, if you did that and you're back, welcome back. We're glad to have you here. But, uh, you know, trying to keep interest along the way is a very, very real thing. So keeping that in mind when you're doing your zines, especially something this long to where I put 48 pages in there and I have to keep the attention uh, throughout the entire time. So uh, once again, adding these little blank, blank pages in here really kind of sets the mood and kind of offsets a little bit of, uh, of what we're going for. So in this next spread here, uh, we're gonna do back to, we're gonna reestablish our other rhythm. We're gonna go back here Bring our next image, which is image eight, into here. You guys know the deal. Command shift option. And actually with this image here, I'm going to click this. If you click, you can actually drag. So we're gonna crop this down a little bit. I don't like this bit of white on the bottom here. And actually I can leave this because I know that the, the corners are getting rounded. Um, so part of this white is gonna get cut off, but then I'm gonna move this back over. because I want that Melly Cafe in there. And uh, I'm actually going to bring this all the way over. And I'm gonna talk about this here in a second. We're gonna make this a little bit larger once again. There we go. Um, so that's how I'm gonna have that one. If you click out of here, we can go back to our F tool. If you hit the space bar, you could get the hand tool to really drag around. So if you're kind of off kilter to, uh, to everything, we're gonna put our Next image in here. Constrain that. That one's perfect. And then lastly, our last spread that we're going to do is one more right here. Once again, to offset the balance, bring this in here and constrain it down. So at this point, 
we've built uh, the first, well, seven spreads because we also have our, our title page here, our intro page. Um, so if we take away our rules, once again, um, we could start to scroll down through and start to see how our spreads are, are looking. We could start to evaluate how things are going and, uh, and really just start to see how everything is coming together and kind of make changes from here. Uh, I would continue forward at this point and finish off the zine. So I'm actually gonna do a couple finishing things. I'm gonna jump back on here and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to finish off the zine. There's a couple things that we need to do um, beforehand and then we could actually uh, export and I'll show you guys what the exported file will actually look like. All right, so all I did was I added two more pages with full page uh, spreads on them. So I just made my, my frame box across the entire thing, placed the image in there, constrained it to the thing, just as you guys have been seeing. I just figured you guys didn't want to see that one more time. Um, but the thing that we have to do here is, uh, because once we actually, I could go up here and I could show you, if we go here to document setup, um, what we're going to eventually end up doing is take off our facing pages. And if we hit OK, uh, what happens is, this is on one page, but it's not on the next. So this is the other half of our spread, but it's still only on this one page. Same thing with this one down here. So this is on one page, this is our other spread. Uh, so it didn't continue all the way through. So if we go back up here, we go to our document settings, turn on our facing pages again. We're gonna bring this back up. I'm gonna go back up to this one first. I'm gonna click on our, our box here. I'm gonna hit Command C, Command V is going to duplicate it. Uh, we're going to drag this over and reposition it right over top. Now what I'm going to do is, this is going to sound or seem a little redundant, but we're going to take and drag this over to the center line, the purple line here. And then we're going to take this one, if we click on this one, so what we essentially just did was we took the top layer, we dragged the, the constraint of the box. So here, actually, let me delete this one. I'm going to show you what we're doing here with this. So we're going to take this, drag it here. So you'll see what we did is we just uh, drag that over. So we're going to bring this back over here. Once again, we're going to Command V, put this back over on top. And now what you'll see is we're going to take this one over to this side, click on this guy here, take this one over to this side. And you'll see it doesn't look like anything happened. But if you, if you look, if we go back up here to Document Settings, facing pages, we take this off, you're gonna have these two halves, uh, let's see here, two half here, the other half here, and they actually go on the different pages. So uh, this is important because what our next step is gonna have to be, uh, we're gonna have to have those di on different pages so that way um, we can make sure that it exports with the proper bleed and everything there. So once again, we're gonna do it on this guy here. I'm gonna click here, Command C, Command V, it's super simple. You drag, drop on top of. It'll constrain right to the proportion. We're going to bring this over. Bring, click on that guy. Bring this one over. You just click on the opposite side of whatever you just um, did. So if I were to delete this, you'd see it's just on that one side. Uh, I hit Command Z in order to undelete. So now we're going to go back up here. So we're going to do exactly what we were just doing. We're going to hit Document Setting and we're gonna take off our facing pages. Um, so you'll notice I, I deleted some of the different spreads just so then we can make this a little bit smaller. Um, 20 is perfectly fine. We can divide that by four, so we'd have five different pages that are split in half. One of the things that we need to consider is our, our bleed lines on the opposite end of uh, the frame lines that we created. So right here, so if you look at, at this guy here, um, I'm gonna hit Command Zero, which is going to uh, fill the frame, fill the uh, window with our, our thing here. I'm gonna hit our selection tool, so V. I'm gonna click on this. What we don't have is we don't have this crop line over here, which you're gonna probably ask, and I asked the same thing, but when I was talking to my printer, they said that this is crucial to have uh, just because of the way that they have to collate everything and the way that they have to uh, set everything up, having it be full bleed all the way around, you're gonna see when we export this file of what this actually looks like, even though this part right here is the other page, this part that we're expanding out is not gonna show up on the other page. It's just how their software has to uh, cut and, and collate everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag 
This area, it was just over here a second ago, we're gonna drag it out to our bleed line so that way we have the full bleed. Uh, and we're gonna do that with every image that we have um, that hangs over. So that guy's fine, that guy's fine if we go down to this one. So what I did over here was I actually, if you, you've seen me, because our image, if you look where our image stops, where I took the photo, the image actually stops right here with the uh, curl of the, the M. Uh, I don't want that to get cut off. I want that to be on the edge of our page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over and then I'm gonna Command C, Command V, paste another one, and I'm actually gonna take the underneath layer. Uh, let's go to the one underneath. If I move this guy over to the side, I'm going to move this over to where this is actually going to bleed into our crop. And I'm going to take this top one. So I don't know if you could see what's happening here. The, the one that I had moved over, I'm selected on the one that's behind. If you right click here and go arrange, bring to front, uh, you could actually bring this guy right to the front. But I'm going to bring this over to our edge here. And then I'm going to drag this over. Um, so this is kind of a, a little janky way of, of kind of making sure that what ends up on the edge of the page is what I want in there. So if, if it ends up cutting over a little bit, it'll have kind of a little double image, but it won't show up as much as a giant white line. So I kind of cheat the system a little bit here. But then we also have to go over here and move this over so that way we're full crop all the way around. Um, so hopefully this is making sense. Every image that's full bleed especially on these guys. So now what we have to do, so this is our double page spread. So like I was saying earlier to where when we have an image on this side and then we also have an image on this side, we still have to connect that over. Even when it's the same image on the other page, we still have to connect this over. So I'm gonna select this. I'm going to drag our constraint over, go to the next page, select this, drag our constraint over. And uh, this last guy, I'm gonna leave how it is so that way you guys can kind of see when the file exports of what actually happens uh, when you don't do that and you don't continue uh, the spread all the way over so now at this point we've set up our entire i had a bunch more stuff in my zine there's tons more spreads and, and a whole outro and a whole write-up on on the the idea behind the zine in the back of the zine that was all designed out in the original one i'm keeping this nice and short but we're going to go up here uh, we're going to go file export and uh, over here, we're gonna label this. So I'm gonna go sketches sample. We're gonna put it on the desktop. Adobe PDF for print is perfectly fine. Now in here, this is a, this is a crucial part. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go to your, out, or your marks and bleeds, and you wanna make sure that you click this use document bleed settings, and then crop marks. You wanna have both of these set up to where uh, that will export with the crop marks that the printer needs to set everything up. It will also uh, set everything up with the actual bleed that you set up originally. So we're going to hit export here. Everything else should be good to go with the, uh, the standard um, settings for everything. I've never changed anything else in there. So now as we look at our final uh, exported PDF, everything uh, is crop marked so you have your crop marks here so everything within the crop marks here will be cut down and that will actually be the size of your zine uh, then you can just scroll through and you can see that our images exported at great quality uh, their full resolution these guys here so this one you see let's see here if we scroll down to our images down here you start to see to where these all have the overlay that we need, so it's going to crop off in here. There's also plenty of bleed on the outside of this, so that way our printers can work with it. And then this guy here, if you see, our crop marks didn't extend over. So what's going to happen is, or I should say what could happen is, uh, when the, the printer, whoever you're going through to print, ends up cropping or cutting everything down and collating it all, when it gets printed, there could be a, a white bar separating the, the center of your image. So when, when these two images here are shown side by side, what you don't want is a white bar in there. And if, uh, if it ends up kind of cutting over or extending over a little bit to this other side, 
um, then you might run into some of that issue. So allowing the crop marks to expand over, at least this is what my printers told me. If, if you guys are uh, experts in this field and you guys know otherwise, I just know what I've done and, uh, and what I've heard from my printer, uh, who happens to be called Crop Marks Printing uh, here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But they informed me on all this and they kind of walked me through on how the files need to be when I export and send to them. But then you have your file here, you send it over to your, uh, your printer and they will know uh, what to do with this when you tell them that you want it in a booklet. So there you have it. It's super, super simple. It's really just using the frame tool, using your shortcut key of shift, command, option C to constrain your images down. You can move them around in there and then uh, you're just doing a repetitive over and over for each of the different um, spreads and then you're just making sure that your file is set up proper at the end of the day. So, uh, I mean, it, it's not as difficult as a lot of people make it out to be. If you just have those couple of tools, you can build an entire zine in the matter of an hour, maybe two hours, whatever it might be, depending on how many times you make shifts and changes and everything like that. One thing that I didn't show you that I could go in here and show you is we can actually double click on an image here, right click, and then you can edit uh, within. And you could edit this within CS6, CS5, and you could bring that image in. So if you need to make any kind of contrast or adjustments or anything like that, it'll pull the image over to, to Photoshop. You can make your changes and then you can save. Uh, and it will repopulate back into uh, the frame that you already had it in at the size you already had it at. And, uh, and it will allow for making edits along the way for any kind of, once you end up pairing images next to each other, sometimes the contrast is a little bit off. You need to make a little fine uh, tunes and fine tweaks on that kind of stuff. But so really it's super simple. You can do so much within the, the small little uh, bit of tools that I've just offered over. So I know that this was a super basic and intro uh, to what it is that we're doing and designing within InDesign. But at the same time, this is about all I know in InDesign. And, uh, and it's allowed me to do zines. It's allowed me to work on the next zine that's coming out soon. And uh, I've been able to do so much with just these small set of tools. So I hope they serve you as much as they've served me. If you have any suggestions on better ways of doing some of this stuff or any uh, other tips and, and tricks and advice, uh, I'd love to hear that down below. Or if you've worked with another print shop and they've told you, you know, different things than what my print shop has told me, I'd love to hear those down below too. I, I don't want to believe and, and, you know, assume that the print shop that I'm working with has you know, given me all the proper tools or anything like that. But uh, I know that when I export the files the way that I export them and I send them over, they don't complain at all. They absolutely love me. They absolutely love the files and they can do everything. And I've never had any issues with misprints on that kind of uh, realm. So uh, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. And then, like I said, I'm looking forward to uh, making a follow-up video to where I really dive in deep with the zine and kind of talk about uh, what it is that I, I thought through as I was sequencing, as I was pairing things up, and really kind of break down the entire zine, but then also talk about from start to finish what the entire process looked like, from conception to selling and shipping out to you guys, and even hearing some of you guys' responses back on the zine, uh, I'll share that in the next video. If you want to buy a copy of the zine, there's still a few available over on Two Stops Apparel. I'm going to put that link in the comments down below and in the description down below to where you can go Purchase one, grab one for yourself, and kind of see how it looks and how it turned out uh, in person. So thank you guys. Thank you for checking this video out. If this is a new video to you or if you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to check out some of the other videos. Go check out the rest of the zine series. But then also we have all sorts of other stuff to where we dive in deep on the creative thought process and the, the thinking behind our artwork. So I would love for you guys to join in on that as well. So like and subscribe down below. We hope to have you in the community and in the conversation. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. And until then, go and push yourselves two stops. Peace.